per agenda, we'll put your put your um, attendance in the chat. We'll we will record that. And so then we'll start the roundtable updates. All righty. So let's so let's begin that uh, governing documents committee. Paul. So I don't have a ton new to report on top of that longer report I gave a, a, a meeting ago. Um, the work continues. The invitation to join us continues. Um, we're we're still about middle stage through like commenting on the document and. Um, I've begun a rough draft of what the new document would look like, complete with revisions and, you know, whatever we're cutting out has, you know, a strike through through it so that we can see what the final document mock up would look like. If anyone's interested in that, um, you know, again, reach out to me. We can get you into the chat, get you into the OneDrive folder where we're, we're doing that work. Um, but yeah, work on the governing documents committee continues. I've in that chat, I have sent a request to find out you know, what times work best for people for an upcoming meeting here. Um, and so, yeah, we're still just, we're, we're organizing a time to meet so we can meet over teams or in person or hybrid um, and just do more discussion on what kind of changes we'd like to see, what we're going to do with the name situation, all that's taking place in the governing documents committee. And so uh, that's all we have with, uh, with respect to report from the, uh, the governing documents committee. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Say, Cap, Mike. Um, so I don't have a whole lot to go over, but um, I did have a really um, <clears throat> uh, valuable conversation with Nicole, the uh, Say, Cap secretary. Um, we're thinking it to be prudent that um, at some point all three schools come together um, on, under Say, Cap's kind of budget to um, go to dinner and discuss kind of the issues that are affecting all schools and how we can work together as a functioning body to achieve those goals as such. So I was very encouraging meeting and um, I will have more probably once SACAP starts up in August. Thank you, Mike. Gabe, are you here? Thank you, Gabe. Uh, Social Media Committee, Alex, Chad, all that's you. So insofar as the social media committee, we're still working on purchasing the Canva account. We've approved the purchasing of the Canva account. Um, kind of similarly with the um, governing documents committee, we're working around a time to meet and really um, we haven't quite met for the social uh, social media committee uh, as it, we're still in summer session and many of our members aren't present. So um, we've, we haven't found it terribly prudent to meet in person. Um, but Let's see, um, hmm, social media committee, what else? Oh, and I'm still working with Senna to figure out the details of the website so that we can start um, getting our hands on the website so that we can follow these sunshine laws and make sure that we're posting all of our agendas and meetings um, so that the public can access them. That's really the driving um, want there, but these conversations are still ongoing. It's just a little harder here in the summer. A lot of people are busy or just not on campus. So, but yeah, that's all we got. Thank you, Paul. Alex, you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, there's not. There's not much that I'd like to add to that. I um, uh, nope. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Alex. OK, um, CSGC, so that's the representatives. I'll go on. I'll, I'll take this one. Um, this is the Student Government Coalition, Colorado Student Government Coalition. Um, still haven't rescheduled the, the meeting for that, so she she is out for a few weeks, the chair of the thing and of the coalition. So what we're going to end up doing is waiting for her to get back. And then when the us four representatives get together, we will find we will find a time that works um, for us and the coalition so that we can share our vision for what we see for the CSGC here from MSU Denver. So that's all I've got for that for now. Policy uh, re. I spoke with Megan, who leads that uh, committee today, and we're going to meet um, for lunch probably next week, and I will be attending this month's um, meeting. And there was uh, last month's was sorry, the beginning of this month, there was supposed to be one and it was canceled. So there I think will be one upcoming and I will definitely be there. 
So nothing to report as yet. Thank you, Ree. Uh, TSAC Treasury, Mike, go ahead. This is your Treasury Committee. Um, so I don't have a whole lot to update on um, in terms of the TSAC Treasury Committee. Um, there was, I did attend the BRC meeting earlier today, and um, there's an interesting kind of um, nuggets of information throughout that. Um, enrollment is gone slightly up from their previous projections, and they're still kind of figuring out. Um, they're playing it kind of close to the chest because a lot of this decision making will happen closer when people are enrolling more closer to the fall semester. So um, they're kind of just kind of waiting and waiting for that to happen. So um, if they have anything major, they didn't vote or anything. So if they didn't major, I'll let you know. Appreciate that, Mike. Um, Faculty Student Affairs Committee, Naomi. Um, I have no updates so far. Thank you so much, ma'am. Reed, do you have anything to add for the, the uh, policy? Or let's see, the Student Affairs Committee? Nothing yet. They're not meeting till fall. Awesome. All right. COVID response. Paul, go ahead with that. All right. So Dan and myself attended the COVID meeting on Wednesday. Um, it was at 11, if I'm not mistaken. And um, we spoke with Cheryl um, uh, Zadowicz and Ruben Zarilla from the Health Center, uh, one of the doctors over at their Health Center. And essentially, um, what we started off with, Cheryl described that we at the university are working to limit potential spread by suggesting the use of masks when returning or heading off to travel. So we're also suggesting that students test before carpooling and um, understanding that this uh, BA4 and 5 constitute a new strain of BA3, as Ruben was describing, um, and that we should exercise caution. So, um, you know, the advice the, the advice they were giving during this committee is that, you know, uh, faculty, students, staff, anybody who's, you know, traveling out of state or even just traveling to a convention or something, I uh, strongly advise that you test um, before and after and um, wear a mask when you come back from it too. And so I uh, generally good advice. Um, Ruben said there is a new strain of COVID, like I was saying, uh, COVID BA3, now BA4 and 5. He says it's the more dominant one in Europe and it has a better immune escape capabilities. Uh, it's more vaccine resistant and more natural immunity resistant. And so people who've been vaccinated and or have natural immunity or are susceptible to these strains. Um, people who have had BA2 are even still getting it. Um, he's been doing a lot of work in contact tracing on, on the campus and a lot of the calls here he's getting are from folks who have been vaccinated or um, naturally immune. Um, he says in uh, on the brighter side, it does it, it while it accounts for 30 percent of new infections, it tends to be less deadly and it acts like a cold impacts the immune system and the lungs and can cause a lot of problems for immunodeficient people um, and folks who are have have um, the conditions that can lead to more problems. Um, regarding those, we are at a high risk level, he says, and the prediction is that we will hit our peak and then begin to go down. We have not hit the peak yet, and so. He says, I'm hoping next week we'll see some numbers dropping, but given all the watch parties, there may be a delay. He's thinking the avalanche watch party may have contributed to it. Um, he's calling three or four people a day for contract tracing. And um, an important part that they brought up was that our free testing in the health center's funding has dried up. You know, the government is no longer sending uh, the funds to make that happen. And so after July 15th, insurance will be charging customers, as were they used, for the new tests. Um, people will start having to pay depending on their insurance starting July 15th, guessing that it would be $20 for a copay or $100 outside of a, a copay. So testing in the university will be much more costly um, given the lack of that funding. But that that's the gist of what we had. I don't know if you had anything to add. Dan, I know you were there. Uh, thank you, Paul, for that. Nope, you about summed it up, but ultimately students are just going to have to be charged for um, testing regardless if they hold the school's insurance or not. Um, because of lack of government funding. So that, that seals it up. Um, how about uh, Dr. Barone and Armando for, uh, for updates? Uh, only thing mean, oh, uh, Dr. Barone and I met this week, just talked about the things we're talking about, um, <clears throat> helping you guys with that purchase for the, the office supplies and the camera account for sure. Um, I'm working with Dave to get up the secretary position for y'all for you all 
hopefully by fall we can get that interviewed and scheduled. Um, I just want to request that y'all kind of create like a quick hiring graphic so you can put it on your social medias. That way you guys can know or put it out into the <clears throat> to the social media world that we're hiring. Anything else, Dr. Ryan? Uh, the only update uh, that I have is that um, I don't know if you all are aware that Dr. Braylon Pantel has accepted another position at the School of Mines, um, and today is her last day. Um, she, she is going to be the VP for Student Life over at the School of Mines, and so as of tomorrow or Monday, um, I have been asked to step in as the interim AVP for student engagement and wellness and the dean of students. And so it's a temporary thing for right now until they fill the position permanently. But I did want to let you all know I spoke with Armando about it this week and I spoke with Dr. Simpkins. Um, and my plan and intention is to still be here as your co-advisor as long as I possibly can be. I will try to manage it, but I do want to be transparent that. I don't know how my schedule is going to be over the next six months. Um, the plan is to fill the position permanently by at least by December or beginning of next year. So just wanted to let you all know that. Um, yeah. Uh, interim Associate Vice President for Student Engagement and Wellness and Dean of Students. And I'm still fulfilling my role as the Associate Dean for equity and student engagement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There was a hand, but I'm going to let that hand go for a second because uh, per the agenda we have this year. So let's talk about the um, because the hands no longer up. So um, at the end, we'll open it up for any final things uh, for, for your hand, Naomi. So old business school supply drive. Um, so per per the agenda, we're going to just go ahead and talk about this. Paul, I'm going to pass it to you right now. Like I had said with the governing Dawkins committee, um, where we're at right now with the school supplies drive is still in the beginning. Get in while the getting's good and get in on the ground floor. Join us. We've been talking to Nickel as well as the president of the CCD uh, campus, and they're both psyched about this idea. Um, I've been talking to other members of the council. I believe Dan has a good source of school supplies donations, and we can begin to field others. Um, a good portion of this could it could be less expensive than we anticipate if we uh, do a good job of soliciting donations. Um, we could start writing, um, I guess, sponsorship requests maybe and ask local businesses if they're willing to support the effort. Whatever we can do to um, decrease the, the cost of the event would be a good idea. But um, yeah, so if you're interested in this, get in touch with myself, Alex, Naomi, Ree, Mike, Dan. We're all working together on this. Um, idea and um, it's really come together so far. We have some we have some nice stuff. We're developing what's already been put out. I see Naomi's got her hand up, so I'd be happy to hear what she has to say on it. Naomi. Um, don't mind my ratchet braids right now, but um, no, um, I was uh, kind of confused um, when you said you, you said you spoke with someone from CCD. Did you say you spoke with someone from CU Denver too or? We have uh, spoke with CU Denver about joining together on our uh, tri-institutional lunch. I'm not totally sure if we've had the conversation with them yet on the school supplies drive. Not that I can remember. So that is part of the work that remains to be done. Oh, we lost our lights. Um, but that's part of the work we, that remains to be done. So. So actually that work is done. We, I, when I spoke with Marcia, um, it's not necessarily on their government side, but she is in charge of like a, the CII office or whatever. So we have the funding from CU. It's just a matter of getting the date ready, getting um, the date ready for all three institutions for it to collaborate together. Um, and then of course, getting like all the, um, what's the word, the equitable advertising kind of thing going for them as well, because they don't want to, um, you know, not give, not be given any credit for that. So we have CU on board. We just have to make sure we get that. Once we get the date in place for all three institutions, they're going to be doing the shareable cost um, almost uh, like immediately. We just have to let them know what money they want. And that will probably reduce the amount of funds we have to um, distribute as well. So once we get a date, we're set. I want to really quickly say um, we should definitely fold the uh, UCD government, student government into this. 
so they don't feel like we went around them or over them or anything like that. Um, this is because this could be a crucial part of beginning a new relationship between the three student governments. We want to make sure they're sitting at that table. Not that I don't totally, totally appreciate everything you've done on that side, Naomi. It's more substantial than much of the other work we've done for the school supplies drive. So it's I'm terribly grateful of your discussion with with Marcy. We're, we're going to achieve a lot of good things, but let's fold. I say let's fold Juan and Morgan into that conversation. Two of the leaders over UCD will have even better um, success, I think. That, that's a good idea, Paul. And so I'm going to add something to this. Oh, Alex, go ahead. Um, um, yeah, so what I wanted to add to this is that when when we do get the Canberra Pro membership or even sooner, I could start on the uh, social media for the school supplies drive and I could do the. Um, oh, uh, the secretary position as well. Um, I'll probably start with the secretary position um, and then maybe kind of if, if we don't get any bites with that, I could post it. You know, maybe uh, um, I don't know. Maybe like well, like once uh, once every two or three months, or maybe just two. Um, but yeah, I could do the school supplies drive uh, flyer because I know it's got a lot of different um, requirements. You know, the three logos, um, certain color swatches, and things like that. So I can uh, I can go ahead and get started on that. Hey, thank you, Alex. Okay, so um, the kind of tie myself into what Paul's talking about. So I, I have a, a work with a community organization at the church that I um, run, help run and there. They have um, basically I'm going to I need a list of the stuff for this that we're going to put into the student, the school supply drive, and I'm going to see how much money they're willing to uh, give us in a grant or donate whatever we need to the supplies. We just need to basically have that out there and they would be willing to if we can I just need a list of that and I'm working on talking on getting some supplies donated for that school supply drive. So I'll keep you all posted on that once I get the list from Paul and talk to them. So that's what I have. Thanks. Is there any further anything on this? OK, I, I'm not hearing anything, so we're going to move on to. Uh, uh, thank you. Lights. The lights have come on again. OK, um, new business. So it looks like per the agenda, we're going to discuss the possible the possibility of using TIV 307, which if people don't know, that is the TSAC office as a space for student orgs. Um, so per the agenda, Paul, go ahead. I'll just open up discussion on this and I kind of wanted to see what other people's thoughts were. Um, I've already heard some good stuff, but um, <clears throat> with the possibility of using TIV uh, 307 or our office space um, and our conference room, for student organizations, I figured that'd be one way we could immediately help student orgs by giving them a conference, a real nice conference room with a TV and, um, you know, a space to organize even hybrid meetings is really nice. And I also think um, when we heard from X in our first meeting, you know, I remember one of the things I talked about was this need for um, student organizations to have a space in which they can work on computers uh, collaboratively and, you know, meet. And I think that we can really begin to address at least a part of that with um, the use of our office space. Of course, ideally, I think we should do this while we have people there, specifically us. So in the summer semester, not, uh, when the summer ends and we begin in August, I figured it would be a really nice thing to have if we had some level of sign up. Um, we could use Microsoft bookings if we wanted and configure the hours of availability. But uh, essentially the idea is that folks would sign up to use the conference room and they could use it for an hour, two hour, however long they need to use it. Um, and then, you know, if it's occupied for that day, then they have to sign up for another one. Or should they want to do the same with the computer, the main computers space we have? Anybody, these computers are configured for multiple users. And so um, it'd be an ideal space should people want to do that too. And with how rarely they're used, I, I really think this would be a good means to really get some use out of that space. And, um, yeah, I'd be I'd love to hear what people think about this idea. With that, I'm opening opening the floor for debate or for discussion. I see Ree, go ahead. I I just a few things that came to mind. Um, I love the idea of a sign up and definitely when our um, council members are in the office. And the only reason I 
say that as I had talked with Paul previously about is, you know, accountability for the equipment, you know, that in our office we are responsible for really, you know, we can't have anything go missing and not that that would absolutely happen, but we have, we're liable, I would think, to the university for the equipment that we're able to use. And also I would love to see safety protocols with COVID in place for, you know, almost like as a gym, when you, when you use laptops or equipment or anything and you wipe things down afterward and if there are a lot of people coming, you know, in a space that, you know, we have some kind of protocols like that in place for, for safety. Yeah. Mike, you have something to say then, Paul? Yes, um, I totally agree with the idea. I think it's a good idea to get student engagement, um, get other ideas into the office and stuff like that. Um, I'm assuming this would be kind of coinciding with a kind of a stricter kind of counselor schedule. So we'll be all counselors. Um, during the fall and spring semester will be kind of scheduled to be in that office at certain times throughout the day, I'm assuming. Um, I'm assuming that's when they would operate as like having some operating hours where we're there as well. Just not, I mean, I guess to watch over them, but also to listen to them, talk to them, see what kind of ideas they have and see what we can implement on the council. So like that. Excellent points from the, the two of you. Um, I want to address what you had said there were you with the COVID. Hadn't even thought about that. Excellent point. We got lots of Clorox wipes. Let's encourage their use. Um, were we to move forward with this? Um, I also want to say with the liability, it's a good point. You know, um, all the public spaces in the university, or even semi-public, like the computer labs, they have the computers um, locked, and so there are these like they're like a bike lock almost that you lock the back of the desktop computer to. They're all they all have the little access port for them. Um, we might be able to um, request. Some of these from the IT department, the ITS department here at Metro. I, I know they have an excess of them, and so we might be able to actually um, physically secure the computers if we feel um, like that's appropriate. I think it may be, um, but otherwise, you know, needing to do this on like supervised time or at least a time when the counselor's in office is is ideal. But I really appreciate the um, the contribution. Thank you, thank you, Paul, uh, Alex. Uh, I would also like to add that I think it's a good idea um, <clears throat> for the, the cleaning. We can um, use the money from the last bill that we passed. Uh, I think last week, the budget one. Yeah, um, so that way we can just go ahead and get the Clorox wipes as needed instead of um, to, uh, bringing it to the council. Uh, thank you, Alex. Mike. Um, to One's a question for prior Armando, and um, one's just a, a comment to see what y'all think about it. Um, would it be so? Say the secretary is there most. Uh, our secretary, when we hire them, is there most of the time. Isn't that a task that we can give them? Is like, oh, when they leave, do you mind just cleaning off each, each like have that be one of their tasks of the day or something, as well as general what sec what the, is in the job description. And the second is just a comment. Um, we're talking about just the main meeting space in the conference room, right? Not the individual offices in the office. Uh, that's uh, for Paul, but uh, well, be, hold on a second. I, I want to get my two cents in on this. So yeah, no, um, the offices I would say are ours, and then it would be the main conference room, and we have yet to be decided on the general area, depending on protocols and safety things like that. So everything is safe. We don't want you know we're here. We were elected to uh, represent the student body, and so we need our offices so that we can have space. Like I know today, like when I need to get stuff done in the in the office. For the, all the other things I have on my plate, I have to go into a place and shut the door or else I will never get anything done other than TSAC and TSAC doesn't pay enough money like it did last time to help me pay my rent. So, um, and I, oh, by the way, I wasn't in it last time. So you see, so we have to really do what we, with good with what we can here. So I'm gonna pass to whoever's next on that. I just wanna say, I will say, um, I remember um, listening on a, on a talk it was a separate COVID talk with another expert from the Auraria Health Center. And I remember them saying to some extent that um, COVID has difficulty living on a, um, you know, on a static surface uh, for a terribly long period of time. Not to say that we shouldn't prioritize like the cleaning of keyboards and stuff like that. I just, I, I, I would feel comfortable leaving that to the folks using the space as opposed to making it a, like a role of the secretary understanding that it may not be as an effective way to combat the spread as, say, 
having folks use masks and washing their hands, stuff like that. But I don't know. I'm up for. Oh, I know we had asked Armando something earlier. Might be. Yeah, no, of course we can definitely put general office. Thank you, Armando. So. Anything, anything. All right, so we're going to move on to. Wait, that's it. So per our agenda and actually technically our agenda doesn't have a space for any last um, burning desires to talk about. Does anybody? But I think I can amend it right now for that. Does anybody have any final things before we adjourn the meeting or actually before we open it up for public comment? Go ahead, Paul. Um, I what was I going to say? We've got a lot more stuff in the works, folks. We got the the food pantry resolution that we've been working on. Um, I would encourage if anyone else is interested in getting in on that, join us. Same goes for the governing documents committee um, as well. Um, oh, and one last last thing. It's a little separate. I know we have called the TSAC Treasury Committee, the TSAC Treasury Committee, and the Budget Committee, knowing that we've assembled a uh, quorum here today with with Chad coming in. Thank you, Chad. I I would motion that we um, decide on one of these two names: Budget Committee, Treasury Committee, and stick to it in all documents. Anyone second that potentially? Well, it's just a motion. So if no one seconds it, it doesn't really take off, but what was the motion again? Uh, the motion to be specific, if that's a point of clarification, is just it's a motion that we uh, call the Treasury Committee the Budget Committee, and then we formally change it in all documents. And if is anyone opposed to changing the name from Treasury to Budget? If, if so, say aye now. All right, it's adopted. OK. It was just a minor point. I appreciate it. Yep, thank you, Paul. Okay, and one last thing since it's opened up for the floor. Um, I also am working on getting a, a large donation of food every week from the same place that I'm working on getting a grant um, stuff for the school supply drive. Um, hopefully 10 large boxes of food uh, out of the church. We we feed 400 families a week and um, a family can come up and say, I, I need 25 boxes without any questions. They get food, right? Everyone needs food to live. So I'm gonna see if we can secure something like that for like 10 boxes, five boxes, something like this for um, the food pantry for students here and see where that goes from there. So um, that's another thing that I'm working on for us here. So I guess anything else, Alex? So I've um, I've been working pretty extensively on the um, the paperwork for the food dockery, uh, food pantry, largely but because I had worked there for so long. Um, but I would like other council members to look at it because I'm I'm not entirely familiar with the process. This is this is my first time doing it, um, but I do think that some of the things I've added are fairly important with the inclusion of uh, dietary restrictions and um, other students who can't get to campus due to uh, disabilities um, or just other health concerns. We use um, some kind of a delivery service, which I know something is Miguel was talking about. And then um, other things like uh, Imperfect Foods or HelloFresh for for those students and other students who are interested uh, in that. So yeah, please, please take a look um, in the Teams. It's a live document as well. So you can see everything that I've written uh, and it's and it's highlighted as well. Thank, thank, thank you, Alex. Go ahead, Paul. Just to tag on to what Alex is saying. Yes, we are working on that document. It's looking great already. It's like 75 to 80% done. Um, if anyone is interested in getting in on that, message me, message Alan, no, 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 uh, message Alex might be, um, but Alan has access to this too. So um, if you're interested in getting in, uh, message us and we'll send you a link to the, uh, the current document we have going for the food pantry resolution. Thank you, Paul. James, James, you have something to say? Yeah, so mine isn't really as far as the food pantry, but it is something that I've been looking at as far as student uh, issues. Uh, one of the biggest things that I see students wanting right now is to find ways to decrease the price of parking. And on top of that, I realized that student, we also increased the price by 25 cents. So one thing I've been wanting to like really look into is trying to find a way to uh, help students with parking prices, especially with how um, inflation and gas prices are right now. So I know it's very difficult. Uh, so if anyone wants to like get in contact with me, we can start like early discussions of trying to find ways around that. This was something I was going to introduce when I got back to Colorado, but I felt like the earlier the better. 
Per perfect, James. Thank you so much. And I, I definitely something I'd like to get on board with. So I will reach out to you and with my email and any anything you need uh, or anything. I'll just let me know. Um, and. Yeah, thank you for that. Paul, go ahead. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Alex. Um, so I had talked to a couple of students just around campus. Um, and I know a lot of the student employees would really like to have an exempt parking pass, um, which I think is pretty reasonable considering that they have to drive here, you know, four days out of the week and so forth. Um, so I, I, th I think that is something we could bring to the university with um, with some persuasion. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Bree, go ahead. I would also love to be in discussions and work with you. That'd be wonderful. Thank you, James. Paul, yes. I, I, I second what Ree says. I'm happy to work with you on that. And I've heard um, that's a common topic from a lot of the students I've talked to, too, is that, you know, they're getting gouged by parking. So that certainly isn't the only thing they're getting gouged from, but that's for another day. So if there's no further comments, questions, going once. All right, we're opening it for, for public comment. Per uh, the resolution that we adopted or on, on public comment, if you're here for public comment, will you just sign, put your name, say public comment in the chat and your name? Go ahead and do that now. Okay, I'm seeing none, I'll give it another second. All right, none. All right, well then, since there's no public comment per the agenda, move to close the, Move to close the meeting. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Second. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.